Look at the thickness of the new desk. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel and share my video, like my video, support me so that I can make more videos of like this. What's up YouTube? This is Vijay Ansura back with another video and today I am at Power Pulse in NGF layout and uh, here's my dear friend Kaushik. Kaushik say hi. So yeah, uh, today's video is basically about your brakes. So since brakes are very very important, uh, at times you just have to make sure that you are maintaining your brakes and making sure everything is correct. So today uh, what I'm basically going to do is replace my uh, disc plate rotor of the rear side and uh, that is what we are trying to figure out right now as you can see here. So I will show you the difference between the, the old disc brake and uh, the new, uh, sorry, the old disc uh, plate and the new disc plate. Why am I replacing it? So most of the times you have seen the disc uh, brake of the rear on motorcycles are very, very soft. They are not very aggressive or they don't have too much of bite. Dominar suffers that. When I say suffer, it's actually designed. That is how it is supposed to be. If you have too aggressive brake, then your ABS will kick in way too frequent compared to a, a, a softer brake. So here we are uh, and uh, we are just opening up the rear disc plate right now, as you can see here. And I will show you. So I've ne it's been ever since I got the bike, it's almost like 30, 40,000. I never replaced the rear uh, uh, disc plate and lately i was suffering with the issues where the brakes would not work so i am at uh, kaushik's garage right now and we are going to go ahead and replace the display please understand the maintenance of the brakes is very 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 important uh, and we will show you why as you can see we are actually opening up the disc plate for the rear and uh, kaushik with two yeah, he has load, loads and loads of power tools. So, I love it. That's why I prefer to come to this guy. He, he is, He's not just a mechanic, but trust me, the way it started, I will give you a bit of story about him. That's the last bolt and we are done. So, let me tell you something about my dear friend Kaushik. He is basically uh, the Himalayan guy. He knows in and out of uh, the Himalayans. And uh, one thing I gotta tell you, uh, there's a story behind it. Uh, Kaushik is basically an IT guy. Okay, there you go. Hi, IT guy. <laughs> so, <laughs> he was in HP Inc. Okay, but yeah, uh, somehow he didn't like the IT work and uh, he was mostly into motorcycles. He loved motorcycles and one of the passion is what brought him to open up his, his own garage as most of the times he was spending time on working on his motorcycle so yeah you never know i might just end up doing the same <laughs> so yeah we are opening up the uh, ABS, abs sensor, sensor disc and uh, this is what actually gives feedback to your ecu that my rear is locked up and you gotta release the brakes when the front is rolling so yes uh, we're gonna ask the expert why we need to replace the disc plate and uh, when to replace the disc plate let me just give you uh, just a quick snip of how the disc looks like and you can definitely guess the one on the left hand side is a brand new one and the one on the right hand side is the old one so let us ask the mr expert so my dear friend kaushik when to replace the disc why to replace a disc and uh, what if you don't replace the disc on time? So basically, each disc plate is manufactured for a specific thickness and a heat signature. Okay. So as you can see between the old and the new, hmm. the old one seems to be more brownish blue which means that it has taken a lot of beating due to excessive braking or heavy braking. Okay, okay. So over a period of time, if this continues on your disc plate, hmm. the molecular structure of the disc plate hmm. tends to separate makes okay. it weak and okay. prone to crack okay. under heavy braking. Plus, if you could see the surface of the new disc and the old one, you can see a lot of scoring lines on the old one. This could be due to the pads material uh, which might cause this or maybe some kind of dust in between the pad and the plate which causes these kind of lines okay. and scores of the metal. Okay. And also, okay. when to replace the disc plate, 
if you look at both of them carefully both look similar except for the usage but okay. when you feel it through your hand you can see uneven surface on this comparing to the smooth even surface on this yeah yeah because of these scoring lines and uneven surface the wear out of the pad will be inconsistent okay and your the braking, braking efficiency becomes inconsistent okay it catches sometimes it doesn't catch up sometimes hmm. for any braking to be more effective it has to be on a smooth surface like on the new one got it so that way the heat developed in the pad will be uniform and the sharpness will be uniform and more faster okay because of this lines the heat signature won't develop that quickly so your pad gets different heat signatures different spots yeah that way you're breaking it yeah. reduces. and i can i can definitely see on the older pad i can see the way the when i touch it it's it's like it's groovy it's like it's going up and down whereas it's this like is wave. perfectly yeah, this is like perfectly wave. shaped up so yeah one more thing one major difference i just realized is uh, the new disc rotor which the came in the old one was a round disc plate and yeah. this is a 2019 edition dominar which has a petal disc plate awesome so it petal like disc plate uh, shape yep. this would help to release the uh, you know yeah this this gives uh, different uh, contact patches for the brake pad to be more effective compared to the uniform one oh okay so okay. plus if you could look at the holes hmm. those are strategically placed in such a way that the cooling has hap you know, the cooling happens on the disc yeah. evenly yeah. so that the disc doesn't suffer these kind of beatings got it and guys for those who are, those who don't know what is this uh, what are these holes about let me tell you one thing that basically these holes are the ones which actually help to evaporate uh, any kind of uh, a layer which forms i don't know the technical terms maybe kaushik the might be able to help and uh, the air circulation cools down the disc in between them okay so that that helps you and one more thing which i had read about over a period of time is that if the earlier we had a, a complete uh, disc okay no holes nothing so in the time of extreme heavy braking there are chances that there can be a layer uh, uh invisible layer which can form i don't know exactly what it is but that invisible layer can literally form between your pad and the disc and which can cause uh, uh, a complete uh, loss of traction friction and uh, loss of braking so these holes are very very important and yes let's see how how do you measure i mean so yeah that was one okay oh so you got a one year caliper good so, so we're going to test one, it uh, both old and new will have markings on it the recommended thickness of the disc plate which says 4 mm oh, the old one mean? it is the same if you look at the old one and the new one both are oh. mentioned saying it should be a 4 mm thickness 4 mm thickness less than that okay if it is less that means your disc is getting scored out it's becoming thin yeah the thinner the plate is the ineffective ineffective the brakes will be and chances of uh, uncertain things to happen on a brake under heavy braking are more when the plate is thin got it sorry for the zoom in zoom out guys but yeah let's see if vernier caliper can help us to understand whether i am at the recommended look at the thickness of the new disc there will be a calibration error of the any measuring equipment but i would say as long as it says 4 that means to say the disc is in spec okay so this is like 4 4.5 4.5 yeah. approximately yeah. and let's let's see what is the measurement of the old so even if we consider the error that means my old so now we need so to understand like even if it microns is microns less huh, even if it is less you know it it's way much more lesser because we need to understand that uh, like i told you you see this look at this this are these are the grooves so right now the one year caliper is on the peak side okay yeah, it, but there is a dip the as well side it will be much lesser see now yeah. it is 4.3 here okay so it's now definitely an even 1.4 3 2 so, so it keeps varying okay so that is not a very good sign that now is now you can see it's around 4.3 when we measured it here so there was 4.1 and now it is 4.3 so 20 microns of a difference in a surface okay so that's a whole lot of difference which can cause a problem so yes, this is also the brake jittering when the surface is uneven when you apply the brake you can feel like you know the brake is like spongy Okay. Okay. Jittering. Yeah, because it it it's like one place it is breaking, the other place it is not it breaking. Is not, yes. And uh, I'll give you a simple scenario, guys. When you are actually applying the rear brake, uh, what happens is when these kind of old uh, plates are there, <laughs> your 
uh, the way the uh, you know feedback comes from the brake it's like it when you hit the brakes like for example if you hit the brakes the bike consistently doesn't stop it just does this and and let's see let's clean stuff i'm gonna get away and yeah what does he do with the old disc plates this is what he does with the old disc plates so yeah somebody's waste is somebody's treasure so if you ever guys want to do uh, any sort of uh, things now you know i would suggest you directly come to kaushik okay i'll put the details uh, the number kaushik's number in the description so you can call up anytime now one thing i gotta tell you is one of my best friend so far because we used to have tea together when he was working in it and uh, now i love him and i feel jealous because he's living his passion <laughs> and i'm still working in it uh, day to night job but again you know what it things matter for different people in a different way and uh, best of luck to you my friend and thank you also if you have any kind of a restoration job any motorcycle anything so this kaushik is someone who does anything okay when people stop there when people get stuck somewhere that is where kaushik comes into picture so if you ever have some weird request and especially when it is himalayan please go ahead and contact kaushik for the same so let's see the rest of the process and i'll tell you after uh, while i'm going to office right now i'm not in my attire to make any video on riding but yeah once i'm about to go to office i will go ahead and give you my feedback on the same so thanks a lot once again let me show you kaushik's garage it's a small one but i love this guy this is it power pulse look at the address and you have the number as well and uh, let's see how things work out for me so now once this is done the brakes are going to be good so thanks a lot for watching this video and have a nice day ahead take care of yourself so guys i just wanted to add one more uh, pointer here you see these rubbers okay over a period of time uh, probably 10000 5000 or 10000 whenever you feel the jerk when when you uh, have when you put in the first gear okay and the tire stays there but the chain jerks like this there can be chances that that particular those rubbers are actually gone so maybe let's see if the play is there look at this so there is a little amount of play but at times when the rubber is worn out you will have more play so make sure every 10000 or whenever you feel that there is a lot of play change those rubbers okay and don't take the one which is completely six piece connected uh, i think rs200 or ns200 have this uh, maybe kaushik can give you a better idea yeah, ns200 has that kind of uh, 220 ns200 and rs200 and okay. as200 as200 so All take the rubbers uh, sprocket rubber okay but what uh, i was told is don't take the connected rubber take the separate rubber so it's much more efficient i don't know why so but yeah you'll have less of uh, rubber beat up dust okay if it's a separate piece if it's a single piece if something breaks in between huh. that kind of bulges in between the other two uh, sleeves inside and kind of causes ruckus okay and that is what sometimes happens so yeah so sometimes it will have a little play on one end and the more play on the other end where the rubber is less oh okay so that happens if it's a connected one Awesome. So basically, those rubbers are meant to give a cushion uh, when the yeah, sprocket yeah. rotates after leaving yeah. the clutch. So that way, your hub doesn't get damaged, hmm. your bearing won't take a beating, and your motion will be free. Awesome. More than free. Awesome. So, guys, remember, change those rubbers when you feel that certain things uh, are not working out. And since uh, one thing, I would I would also like to add <laughs> one thing, Kaushik. So what happens is there is something called as a uh, sprocket uh, wearing out. Now, in sprocket wearing out, what it means is in certain rotation your chain is loose and in certain rotation half of the rotation the chain is uh, tight now that can happen when these grooves you see here if some of they were uneven uh, you know over a period of time the way you ride this groove these set of grooves can probably be more worn out than these set of grooves so that is where in this part when the this part of rotation your chain will be loose and this part of rotation your chain your chain will be tight so whenever you're getting the chain adjustment done make sure you rotate the tire and every time you check the uh, play of the chain don't just uh, you know tighten up and pull it back and tighten the chain and go off you will have that sound riding us yeah i i i <laughs> kaushik i'm not too technical like you <laughs> those are all simple terms so what do you call that grinding noise grinding noise grinding noise so guys grinding noise next time everybody is going to say grinding noise
and whenever you are doing these kind of things please make sure you clean uh, your uh, disc caliper uh, my disc caliper is always most of the times clean but yeah if you don't have it get it done uh, now since my disc plate is changed I may not immediately see uh, the proper braking because the pads are a bit differently worn out compared to the new disc which I have ideally I would recommend that when you are changing the disc plate you also change the disc pad but since my pads are pretty much new I am not changing that and uh, but still it should be okay so yep yeah, there you go